Welcome to the Real Women Go Live podcast. Buckle up and get ready for the ride. The Real Women Go Live podcast is going to give you a big surge that will motivate you to move your business forward with inspiring guests, live video tips and tricks, and Sandra's weekly challenge. It's all about the community of lively women that will encourage you to go live and cheer you on. And now, here's your energetic host and lively leader, Sandra Centorino. Hello, hello, livelies, and welcome to the Real Women Go Live podcast. I am so energized and excited to be here today with someone that's on the other side of the world. In fact, she's in another time zone. She's over in Paris, France, and I'm very excited to introduce her today. Um, Elizabeth and I connected about a year ago in another community, and we have been connected ever since. And her name is Elizabeth Milovadov, and she is actually hashtag digital parenting is her hashtag. So a welcome to the show, Elizabeth. I'm so happy you're here today. Well, thank you. I'm happy that we um, finally got together. It's great to be with you and to talk about all of your good stuff with the Livelies. Yeah, I'm really excited. And so what I want to get into is the idea of this show and why I started and my mission with everything that I do live is to bring a community of real women together, and you are a real woman, uh, together. And Together as a group of women, no matter what business we are in, no matter where we are in the world, we have a mission and a purpose to go live and spread that message. So in the power, with the power of the community, and I've tested this for about a year on Facebook Live and a Facebook group and so much more, it really has grown into a group of spirited, lively women that are cheering each other on. And that is really what it's about, about Elizabeth. I can't even speak. And I'm so happy to have you here today. I want to tell people what you're doing, first of all, which is just amazing. For listener, people listening in that have children, mine are grown, but it's still something that I went to through, you know, way back when, when I wish you were around, when really there was no internet back then. I'm really old and so are my kids. But you bring awareness and um, education to parents that sometimes worry about children and their safety online. So welcome again. Tell us a little bit about what you do, why you do it, and how you use the power of live video and your voice to get your message out there to inspire those parents and those people that you want to help. Wow, that was like a great introduction. And <laughs> um, I just loved how you really hit it on the on the head there with um, creating awareness, uh, because that's really what I'm focused on so much is just trying to get to parents and caregivers um, around the world just to let them know that internet technology and social media, you know, fantastic stuff, um, fantastic um, technology is here and more is on the way, but that parents have to roll up their sleeves and do a little bit of critical thinking and they just cannot, you know, um, sink a baby in front of an iPad or um, I said sink. (laughs) I meant sit, sit a baby in front of an iPad. Look at me. I've got tech on the brain. (laughs) That They can't just, you know, let them let their little ones, you know, game all the time, et cetera. They really have to to, to think about what what tools they're giving to um, their children. And in fact, um, I would say that with so many things happening um, with, with virtual reality and artificial intelligence, and even for your listeners who have Alexa and Google Home and all of these wonderful um, assistants in their homes, I always say, please just think about, you know, your children. And when I talk about children, I do mean the, the little people. Uh, I'm yeah. sure the teenagers can figure a lot of this stuff out and, and they get it. But the little people, they just have serious access. Um, and I'm saying that I can even give you an example from today. I just came home and, um, you know, my husband thought that our son was just watching uh, regular little television and um, the little guy had gotten onto a YouTube channel, YouTube channel on TV. Wow. Yeah. And he was watching, you know, the the video games that he likes to watch on his iPad, which he does not have because he was supposed to be doing his homework. Ah. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's always to to be thinking about what what we're giving to them. Um, Now, I think you also asked me, how am I using lives? Um, Well, I think that... um, 
I mean, I'm just so happy to be in your group because I really think that um, just this whole idea of all these women who are really cheering us on, uh, you know, and whenever I do a live, which I have to admit, I haven't been doing as many as I should, but I will, <laughs> I promise. Um, you know, as soon as I, as I, you know, go live, I, you know, I get a thumbs up or, or a nice little sweet message from someone. And, and, you know, that just is so encouraging. It keeps you going because as we all know, sometimes you can go live and no one is there at that moment. Uh, but people will, you know, hear you later when it's recorded. And when you have a little bit of support, that goes a long, long way. And um, that's one of the things that I find is so fantastic in this community. Totally uh, agree with everything that you said. Um, and your your services and your message, Elizabeth, is so needed in the society that we're living today. And awareness, you said the word awareness, and so many of us parents, specifically ones of the little ones, are just not aware. Um, and I just wanted to tell you something that really troubled me. I was on vacation for our anniversary in St. Lucia with my husband a few months ago, and you're probably all going to relate to this, all of you listeners, as well as Elizabeth, but when you're out at a restaurant and you look to the right and look to the left and you got a beautiful little family that looks so lovely and their three-year-old has an iPad in front of them watching, you know, a video game or whatever. And the, and the teenage daughter has earbuds in and isn't even looking at the parents and, and who knows what she's doing online right while her parents sit next to her. It's so scary, Elizabeth, but it's also I would love to have you touch on this. It's also annoying and disrespectful because if we ever did this, I'm in my 50s, I think you're younger than me. If we ever did this when we were younger, our parents would just not tolerate it. Um, And so what do you think of that? It's just, it's so annoying when you see it in public with families and young children specifically that the mother will just toss over her cell phone, you know, be quiet, Charlie, you know, go play on the internet while we have dinner. And it's just, oh my gosh. And so what's your opinion on that? How do you, uh, first of all, teach us how to hopefully not have that happen in our family, but to also be more aware and be on top of our children? How can we teach them to practice, you know, better behavior with this, this social media that really is in our pocket? Right, right. Well, I think that, um, that it's, it's, it's a difficult question. And the reason why I say that is because, um, <clears throat> one, we don't know, you know, what happened with that particular family. So, for example, let's imagine that they just had a crazy day and the child, you know, had not been on iPads or, or on a smartphone all day long, was doing all of these things or, I don't know, had physical therapy or or was, you know, doing the alphabet and was just working, working, working. And the parents yeah. just said, hey, let's have a romantic dinner. We don't want to have a babysitter. We just need a little break. Let's let, you know, the kids rock out on the iPads and the smartphones so you and I can just be together. <laughs> that, That's know, interesting. It, yep. Yeah. And it okay. Can totally happen. Yeah. Where the parents just need a break, and so I, for one, I'm always saying, you know what? If you're going to take that break, assume it and make it as short as possible. Don't let the kid watch a two hour episode. Yeah. Um, but you know, keep it short and take the break with no with no guilt. Right? Yeah. Because we all need those breaks. But. But, Sandra, and this is why I, I'm giving you my little exception first, because I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to judge. I don't want to parent shame. Right. But the second part is, let's talk the truth. We know that 90% of the cases, that's not what we're talking about. Sure. It is really just parents, um, you know, um, um, plopping their kids in front of, of iPads because it's the easy way out. I'm not going to use this phrase. I'm going to quote Simon Sinek, who had mentioned um, some failed parenting strategies. Yeah. And, and he was talking about, you know, the ease of which we use technology to soothe our children. Wow. And um, I think that it's something that, you know, parents and I have done it too. So that's why I'm not sitting here saying, oh, I'm, I'm holier than thou because it's, I'm, that's not the case. But I'm just saying that we all need to be aware of those types of situations when you're going to do that, why you're going to do that. Um, and, and really, I think in all of those situations, parents need to think about being role models, which means their smoke, smartphones are not on the table either. I know it's difficult because sometimes you just need that little break. But, you know, when you take us back 40, 50 years and even less, you know, family time is family time we're supposed to be having dinner together and that's one of the things that um that i do tell parents that the studies even show that the 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 children who have more resilience are the ones that are just having those dinner uh, dinners around the family with the parents uh, or the caregivers because they're they're communicating 
eye to eye contact, someone is showing an interest in their day, you know, what did you do? What happened? Or, you know, talking about uh, current events or whatever. And we're missing a lot of that shared sit down family time uh, because technology has made our lives so much more easier, so much more convenient. And ironically enough, we're working more and we're also yeah. bringing home the technology. You sure. Know, we're still answering emails late at night. Would you believe, Sandra, that France even came down with a law last year that employers are not allowed to uh, send text messages to employees? I believe it's after 7 p.m. and on the weekends. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it has a certain, I think it's only for people with companies with more than 50 employees. But still, you know, even the government recognized that, um, you know, technology, it is just uh, ubiquitous. It is pervasive. It just, it's so easy to shoot off an email, you know, right at dinner time. You thought of something. Let me just, let me just crank this out. Um, yeah. And, and actually, I'm sorry, you, you have me so giddy and passionate about my topic. But <laughs> speaking, speaking about just, you know, shooting off that email, this is something that I myself have done where I've had my smartphone in my hand and my son, my young um, 12 year old has come up to me and asked me a question. And I'm like, just one second, let me just finish this email. And he's yeah. like, mom, mom. And, and I'm, I'm almost finished, almost finished. And you know, he, he has really told me that I'm not there. And I'm like, man, you know, wow. I, I, I got to practice what I preach. But yeah. what's worse, Sandra, is that the studies have shown that when we do that, we have this sort of tech face, if I if I may. Yeah. Where your face is just kind of slack and you're kind of into what you're doing. And wow. when you turn from your smartphone and look at your child, you have that same expressionless face. And so that's what children are growing up with. We've seen the studies with babies, you know, with moms who are scrolling rolling on their smartphones instead of looking in the eyes of their children, whether they're nursing them or giving them a bottle. Wow. Um, I lie to you not. I have even seen smartphone holders where you can hold your phone and it has a bottle attachment. To oh, it. my God. Yeah, are you yes. serious? Yes. Oh, so my gosh. Bottle at the same time with one hand. Wow. Um, you know, it's it's a crazy world out there, and I, as I said, my, my I really feel that my job is and my mission is not to say tisk tisk shame on you parents, yeah. but really just to tell them you know, what they're doing and let them make the decision. Um, if that's mean that they want to continue, what are the, the health risks? Because a lot of these things are health risks. We've seen in the last 15 years that more and more children are becoming nearsighted. We have seen children with speech uh, issues, wow. um, with handwriting problems. It's all documented. Um, and we just have to, you know, be aware. And I don't think that, you know, a zero ban uh, is the way to go, even though there are people in Silicon Valley that are doing exactly that, where their children have no technology. Wow. Um, but I do think that we really have to look for that balance. And so that, my dear friend, is what keeps me going, what just gets me so excited. I feel like I'm running around telling everybody, you know, um, that the emperor has no clothes and they yeah. really need to see it. They just have wow. to, 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 to get a grip and understand these things. This is so eye-opening, and I appreciate you sharing and being open with your own son and your own family, uh, because that's why that's why we love you so much. You're just real, and you're sharing your yeah. own. You know what? You're part of the, the group. You, yeah. You're not the perfect parent, and neither am yeah. I, but um, it's so needed, and I know that parents are needing your message. They need to listen to you. They need to listen to you live. They need to hear your voice. And you have such a great voice, by the way, I have to add. Um, so whether it's on Instagram with a hashtag digital parenting, or you're speaking on a public stage, I've seen you as at special events. So how do you do it? They need to hear you. Tell us how you get your voice out there. And also, I want to hear the poop, too, because I know so many people give me excuses constantly, Elizabeth, and I know you had mentioned time, so we can go into that, but I've heard everything from, like, I'm too busy, I don't like how I look, my hair doesn't look great today, you know, so for, talk about the excuses and then talk about the ways that you are implementing and the way you're moving forward in your own biz business with your own mission on how to get those parents to hear you. Because your voice, if it touches one person on an Instagram Live for 30 seconds, you've done your job. And now you're going to bring them into a community. Maybe you have a book to, to share with them or some kind of course or whatever it might be. They're going to be connected because they're going to hear you live. So tell us about the excuses and then tell us about the plan going live and what you're doing now. Okay, so the excuses part is really easy because that's right at the forefront of my mind. Um, I just feel like I don't have time. Um, and, you know, I'm 
I, I'm a, a law professor, so I teach law and technology on Fridays. Um, I am a consultant for the Council of Europe, so I'm running around. I just had this week, I had two meetings at the Council of Europe um, talking about different projects. Two weeks ago, I was in Morocco for the Council of Europe doing wow. a speaking event. Yep. Um, at the uh, Not next week, but the week after, the Council of Europe is sending me to um, Finland uh, for a high-level conference to talk about artificial intelligence and the effects on our children. I mean, so, you know, I'm kind of all over the place. And I just have a new hat, which is uh, working as European um, Cooperation and International Projects Manager for this French online safety association. And it's just a little bit of part-time uh, work to help them out. And uh, and I just love what they do. So I'm so happy to endorse them. Wow. And I'm the mom to two little boys. And I'm a wife. And I'm a good friend. And, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. excuses. Yep. Um, but what I've also realized, and this is what you have helped me realize, is that I do not have to get on a live and speak for, you know, 30 minutes. I can really just get out there and just, you know, give a quick message. Uh, and it's really funny because we have this call scheduled for today. And on Monday, I said, you know what? I'm just going gonna, gonna to do a quick live um, because there's a new game that's come out it's called apex legends which is just wilder than Fortnite. it's only been out came out on february 5th so less than what 11 12 days yeah the kids are going bananas and so i mean they're just going wild and i'm like i've got to tell parents that this is happening and the thing with the, the urgency is that i want to be known as that reliable resource where they uh, sure say, oh, elizabeth yeah. said it first she knew about this first she yeah. gets it so those so they need, the, they need you. They need time. their warning. Yeah. They do. They need their warning. And I also realize, thanks to your community, uh, you know, I, I do love it when I have a good hair day, I have to admit. <laughs> but I also realize that I can just, you know, bust alive, as I like to say. I can yeah. just bust alive yeah. really quickly. Um, and, and, you know, unscripted as well. Um, I did your, your uh, roadmap um, challenge, which I love because I wrote down like the seven tips of how to do a great live and how to introduce yourself and to repeat who you are and all these things to keep your your people engaged and to, for them to know where to find you sure. but i also realized that if you give them that that essential and you speak from the heart and you you tell them you know what's happening and what's truly going on that's fine too so i i've said that i will do that and now to talk about my strategies one of the ways it's something that i've learned over the past six years as an entrepreneur yeah is that if you do not write it down and schedule it it does not happen yeah, got that so. right. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh, exactly. we should all be listening. Did you guys hear that? Will you repeat that again? If you don't schedule it, yeah. it doesn't happen. Exactly. So, yeah, and so I just said, you know what, I've, I've got to just schedule it. And perhaps I won't do it. Perhaps I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll just, you know, sit, do a reminder on my phone and just, you know, go live. And I'll just put that, put a couple of, of moments because I'm, again, I'm not talking about, um, you know, uh, you know, sharing a, a dissertation or something. This is just a quick tip. And I'm going to think about mm -hmm. this as speaking to my friends, speaking to the livelies and just yep. telling them something that I feel they have to know. And perhaps maybe that's what I'll even call it, you know, the digital parenting tip that you need to know today. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I want to encourage you. And I don't know because your safety and all that, if you think it's kind of creepy or not appropriate, but... I was just touched by your courageous and story about your son. And that, I think, would really have an impact on someone else. Here you are saying, I'm the digital parent coach, but you know what? I deal with my own thing. And listen to what happened with my son the other day. So many women, including me, and my daughter's at 25, and they'll come over, and my daughter, Allie, who's my little old soul, will say, like, Mom, are you going to put the phone down? Because I'm here to visit. And I, I, I'm just, I feel kind of bad. But you know what? I think that would really, really have an impact on others to hear that kind of story. So, oh gosh, I would love, because you do so many fun lives and you're so creative. I think it would be so great to hear personal stuff, you know, any kind of yeah. personal stories that people would really latch onto and, and, and relate to you right away. So. But I thank you so much for the encouragement, Sandra, because I do think it's important. And as I said, if I just take out that whole, you know, it's got to be structured, and it's got to be perfect, you know, because we all know that perfection is the enemy of the good. And I'll even say good enough. Yeah. Um, you know, I just need to get it done and get it out there. And, you know, I remembered in one of your challenges that two of the videos that just I was on the floor laughing was doing my little makeup tutorial. Oh, my and God. And the cat. And, and the, the cat. cat video. Yeah. And so I just said, you know, I've got to do more of the, whatever's 
current, you know, yeah. what, whatever is happening and what I know that people want to see, what resonates for them, yeah. I really think I should, you know, come in and just uh, <laughs> do my, my own little thing with it. I was going to do like a Tide Pod challenge. I'm sure you've heard about that, right? Um, the, the, where the kids are taking Tide Pods, you know, the, the, the washing clothes. No, I must have missed pods. that. I'm an old oh, lady. Yeah. I'm an old lady with old kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was last year's thing. Yeah. They were taking these things and they were eating them, uh, oh. you know, on and filming it. And I was going to take some and, you know, pretend like this is how we do the Tide Pod challenge, you know, and then, of course, not. And um, then you and, put you put a load of laundry in. <laughs> Cleaning your husband's dirty clothes. That would see, that would get my attention. Exactly. That's the real challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's what I should do is check with you first for my ideas. But, oh yeah. my God. I love that. I'm daring you right now, girl. Over in France, you are officially dared <laughs> to do some fun kind of challenge like that. I think that would, I, oh my gosh. Challenge accepted. Yeah. I do that. And I also, I agree with you about, um, um, the personal stuff. It's really interesting that you say that because one of the things that people always said in the very beginning about writing a blog was to, you know, make it personal so that people could relate to you. And I didn't do that. And I couldn't do that because I didn't want to, um, to, you know, put my, my children out there. I didn't want to be talking, you know, about what's going on, but it's interesting because, you know, six, seven years down the road, um, it's not so much that I'm talking about, um, their stuff as I'm talking about my stuff. Exactly. And, and that is a complete, that's, that's different. And I do talk about how I, uh, put on once a wonderful parental control, but name will remain nameless yeah. and put a parental control on uh on our computers and a couple yeah. of weeks later my then 11 year old um uh came in and i actually already received a note um, a notification on my computer that it had been uninstalled and literally sandra two minutes later he came bopping into my office saying yeah. mommy i am a hacker i have oh my god <laughs> you've got to yeah. be kidding me yeah. Oh, God. And, and so, you know, but I think that those kind of stories, it, it's okay. I don't think that they're going to sue me later on. Right. Because once again, in France, yeah. parents can possibly be sued for invasion of privacy. For oh, my gosh. And posting a bit too much about their children. So I think that it is important for me to share these stories because um, I, I agree with you that it makes, well, not only it makes me more personable, but it shows people that I'm right there with them. And yeah. And frankly, um, as somebody who has battled with weight, I would have much rather go see a doctor who <laughs> or a nutritionist who was a bit chubby before and like has lost some weight and maintained it uh than to go and see some skinny heifer who's exactly <laughs> who's never had to battle like i have but you <laughs> serious and i'm right there with you i'm weight watchers i think 15 <laughs> times now i lost the same 15 pounds but that's another episode <laughs> But um, I loved when you told that story about your son. I'm just bringing that up one more time because I'm just yeah. so into that story. You mentioned something like when he looked like it was like almost like you would. I was reading a storybook and I was picturing it. You were like, and he looked over and I had that digital face or whatever you said. And I'm just like, oh, my God, that would like totally pull up my heartstring if I heard this woman speaking, saying this, because how many of us have that digital face? And we're just like, damn. Yeah. They so do. as soon as you're engrossed in your your smartphone, you know you you become expressionless. Yeah. Uh, because you're doing what you're what you're doing. Yeah. And by I'm just since I've already thrown my son in a thousand times in the story. He also you're talking about people uh, families having dinner and being uh, on the devices. He also coined an expression saying, you know, look, mommy, there's another tech date. Wow. Interesting. Because, you know, we'll go and see people, just two people, a couple, and they will both be on their smartphones. Interesting. Not at each other and not talking, and he calls it another tech date. Oh my gosh. And he's how old? He's 12 now. Wow, but that's scary. Oh it's my very gosh. Scary. Very observant. So tell us, I could just talk forever with you. <laughs> I don't know what time it is in Paris, but it's time for lunch here for me. <laughs> but, um, close to dinner time. Here. Yeah, I, I am so here. excited you got to come on here, and you just have so much to share. and so much that parents need to hear. And I just can't wait to see what you do. I'm going to give you a little boot in the ass over here from Connecticut to London to say, make time, like 30 seconds, a couple of minutes to go on there. And you really, you're going to have an impact on so many people. You can tell stories, you can get our attention, you're so animated. And um, I'm just so happy that you're in my community. So tell us, the listeners, how we can find you live or if we want to find out about what you do and what you teach, how can we get more of that? Uh, please sure. share that. 
So I would say first, and for me, what I find the most fun is if people join my community on Facebook, um, which is called the Digital Parenting Community. Um, that's because there's other child protection experts and parents and uh, cyber security people and child psychologists, and we're all in there, you know, rolling up our sleeves to support and and help all the parents. We're close to about uh, about fourteen hundred now, wow, um, which is just a lot of fun. That is, as I said, just free resources and support. And I also post a lot of. Uh, documents and PDFs in the files, things that I've worked on at the Council of Europe or for Qatar. I just finished doing a project for Qatar. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. So, you know, digital parenting resources just around the world, I put them in there when, when they're in English, of course. Um, the second place I would say if you want to watch me um, is that I will start to, the Facebook Lives will go into that community for sure. Awesome. But my, but my Insta Lives and for everything else, um, you can find me on Twitter, on Pinterest. Um, everything else is at Digi Parent Coach. Awesome. Um, yeah, and in fact, I should have probably made that my hashtag. What was I thinking, digital parent? Digi parent. We'll change it. We okay. we still have yeah. time, yeah, and so we'll, we'll also put some of these uh, links in the show notes. Um, yeah. Elizabeth, it's been a real joy. I'm glad that we got to connect today, and I we're gonna I'm gonna tell you, uh, v- listeners listening in, stay tuned because coming up next is Sandra's challenge. You heard me. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Have a great day. Have a great night, wherever Sandra, you are, be, whatever time. You, yes, but before you bite off, leave your head off. Let me just say. Thank you. Thank you so much for your community, for supporting us all. Thank you for having your mission, which is to help us with our mission, uh, because you've just boosted me again, and I'm going to just ride on this high for like the next two months. I promise you, you will have some challenges. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I can't wait to see you go live. And for all of you listening in, again, follow the hashtag Real Women Go Live, because I'm going to challenge Elizabeth again. When you go live, use that hashtag Real Women Go Live. And we are going to have a community, a movement happening around the world with that hashtag. So we'll just click on it, search for Real Women Go Live. Elizabeth will pop up. Everyone else will pop up that's using it. And we'll be able to watch and view each other's lives and cheer each other on. I love it. So thank you again so much. And all of you listening in, stay tuned because coming up next is the challenge. It is time now for Sandra's Challenge. You heard me right. I love to challenge people and dare people to go live. And this is your opportunity. So here it goes. Take your phone, face it towards you, click the damn button. You can be on any platform you like, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to go. And make a 15-second video of yourself. You can say or do anything you like. Post it on any of those platforms and use our hashtag, Real Women Go Live. We will find you and be cheering you on. That is what Real Women Go Live is all about. So I dare you, get going now and post your video. Thank you for listening today. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with your friends and join the Real Women Go Live movement today by visiting realwomengolive.com. That's real, W-O-M-E-N, go live.com. And remember to follow hashtag Real Women Go Live. Until next time, peace and positivity. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.